Good morning. Welcome back to Jarhall Homestead. I woke up this morning with 10 gallons of milk in my fridge and went out to milk and got three more. So I have to make some cheese and I am going to make Parmesan today and I'm going to take you along with me so you can make Parmesan in your kitchen too. So the first step in Parmesan is to heat up your milk. Actually, it is to skim off the cream. We are supposed to partly skim the cream, so definitely take the, the thickest part of your cream off of this. Whatever milk you're going to use, if you're using raw milk, which is what I do. If you're not using raw milk, I would th say a 2% or a 1%. Um, and you'll follow directions. I always go by the 200 Easy Cheese. I always link this in the description box below too. But because I'm using raw milk, I um, don't exactly follow every instruction. So I'll take you along with it. 94 degrees is what we're going to heat this milk up to. I've got my big pot on the stove and I am right at 94 degrees. When you are making a thermophilic cheese, this cheese is going to be thermophilic. It's actually going to get heated higher than your mesophilic, like a cheddar or a gouda. Um, Asiago and Parmesan is pretty much the only cheeses that I usually make that are thermophilic. You can use it your yogurt way, which I just happened to be like making yogurt last night and um, it was it was incubating all night and now I am straining it off so I'm actually going to use maybe I can show you. I have that straining off into the bowl. That's going to be my yogurt way. I'm going to use that to culture this cheese. So I have six gallons. This is where I have to really go off because there's no, there's nothing in a cookbook or uh, in, no instruction that is like the exact when you're doing things like this. So I'm going to do three fourths of a cup of yogurt whey in order to make this a thermophilic cultured cheese. So I think three fourths a cup is gonna do great. Okay, three fourths a cup of our yogurt whey. This is just yogurt I made in the Instapot. I have a video on it, I can link in the cards. And I always make it into Greek yogurt by straining, letting it hang, and letting the, the yogurt whey come off. And that's what I use to start this cheese. So then we're going to stir up and down, mixing that culture in, and then we're gonna allow this to ripen for a total of 45 minutes before we add our rennet. So in my busy home with five kids and Christmas right now, we have lots of Christmas activities we are trying to get done. This means that I finally get to jump in the shower for this 45 minutes. Definitely set a timer so you do not forget. So we got it to 94 degrees, we turned off the heat, we added this culture, we're stirring it in, then we're going to put the lid on it to kind of keep that temperature about the same. Set a timer for 45 minutes before we add the rennet. 45 minutes has actually passed. Now we are going to add our rennet to our milk here. Um, you're going to need a quarter cup of water. We are going to dilute our rennet in this quarter cup. Make sure this is not chlorinated water. Um, I think because we have six gallons here, I'm going to use animal rennet. I always use this New England cheese making animal rennet. And I always have the um, link below the video in the description box. I'm going to use one teaspoon of animal rennet for the six gallons of raw milk. If you are using store-bought, you're going to do the ratio that they have for you in the book in your directions because it's going to be a little bit different anytime you're using raw milk compared to store-bought pasteurized milk. And you will also need to add the you're also going to need to add calcium chloride if you are using store-bought milk, pasteurized milk. Now I sprinkled that on the surface of my milk. We're going to mix it up. We are going to mix this together in an up-down fashion. From the surface of the milk down to the bottom. Making sure that it goes through completely from the top of your pot to the bottom. You 
you should probably take no longer than about 30 seconds to do this because the rennet is going to start working about then. We're going to put the lid on it. We keep that heat off. We're not touching the heat. And we are going to put 45 minutes on the timer and let this coagulate for 45 minutes. It has been another 45 minutes. Let's see if this is going to give us a clean break. We use a clean finger and put it through, lift it all the way up. And does it cut across clean or is it kind of mushy? I'm going to say it needs about five more minutes. It was kind of clean, but it also broke off a little bit like that. So let's give it five more minutes, then we will come back and it will be time to cut our curds. We have given this its five more minutes, so I'm going to stick a clean finger in. Yeah, that's perfect. That's a good clean cut. I'm going to rinse that finger off. And let's see, for this, we are going to use a, skit, uh, a whisk. We're going to use a whisk. We get to whisk these. That's very nice. Um, I think this, it, Asiago gets whisked. Parmesan gets whisked. It just kind of makes it a little bit easier in my brain to get them um, even because you're whisking the whole thing. But we will go in stages. So I will like do the top part, portions, top portion, then the middle, then go down a little deeper, do the middle portion. This doesn't <laughs> go all the way to the bottom, but we will try to get as close to the bottom as possible. And then we'll let it set for five minutes and let those curds kind of toughen up a little bit before we start the next process. So. Right on the top, and then a little lower. This is very, very, very full. Right, a little bit lower. All right, <laughs> a little lower. All right, the tip of my finger has to go in and over to the bottom portions. Uh, it's a very hands-on cheese. Cheese making is hands-on. Bread making, anything in the kitchen if you're going to be good at it. Ooh, it gives me the creeps when people cook like in their own kitchen and they're like wearing gloves. The only time I'm going to do that is like a window. I, I don't know that I've ever. There's some raw things that I wear gloves. Maybe. But... Okay, I'm getting a phone call. Sorry about that. I got a phone call, but I finished whisking these, and now they're going to set for 10 minutes. I said five, but for Parmesan and with these teeny tiny um, little whisked curds, they're going to set for 10 minutes before we start our next step. So we're going to set the timer, put the lid on it. Anytime you are leaving this be, please put the lid on it. That helps that temperature stay the same. Now comes the longest part of making any cheese, and it's the stirring. So for a Parmesan, we are going to heat these curds, the temperature of the pot, up to 124. And we, right now, looks like I'm at like 90, 91, 92. We need to do that over an hour. So we need to raise it to 124, taking the whole hour, doing it very gradually, and stirring the whole time. So I will definitely not keep you on here for that amount of time. I'm going to go on medium low for now. And if it takes too long, I'll start heating it up a little faster with a higher temperature. But you're going to stir the entire time. You're just going to do it gently. You're not going to be uh, too hard with your curds. And if you see that, I'm sure my whisk did not get all of the curds in the bottom. Now, yeah. they will have to, they'll just be broken up while you're doing this. So here we go. I'm actually, this is a great time to put on an Audible book. I love Audible. We love audiobooks around this house. I can only one person and we love literature based learning. So I cannot read every single book that we want to ingest out loud to all of my children. So we will do audiobooks off Audible all the time. Probably one of our best investments in our homeschool has been Audible. But for me, this is a Saturday, 
So I'm not teaching, I'm not reading to anybody. Everybody's doing their own little things today. And so I'm going to watch a podcast, or watch, listen to a podcast. And I will see you back here after about an hour. Okay, we have stirred now for a whole hour. I'll show you what these curds look like real quick. They have knit down to pretty tiny. And when you squeeze them, they definitely stay together. They're trying to knit real close. So we're gonna let them set in the pot for 10 minutes, but I just wanted to show you what's going on behind me while I'm busy for an hour. Daisy, can you wave? <laughs> By the way, while we have these in the pot settling to the bottom, we've turned off the heat, we set a timer for 10 minutes, go ahead and get your press ready because that's what we're going to do next. I always run hot boiling water through my press and my cheesecloth before I put my curds in them. Okay, I'm going to try to show you part of my cheese making that I usually do not put on film because it is in the it is the most ungraceful thing that can possibly be done in my kitchen that ever gets done in my kitchen. It is actually dumping this huge amount of whey, the curds are settled to the bottom, into a, a five gallon bucket. I always have these outside, those five gallon buckets, they're um, for farm chores. So I bring one in, it is not clean, it's not something we're going to eat, we're just going to dump it out there, we're actually going to let the animals have it outside. So there are leaves and stuff, but it's it's fine. Um, but it's not graceful. So, I don't even know if I can lift this over there. So I might actually have... Honey, can I put that bucket right here and have you move your baby so I don't get anything on your baby? Okay. I'm gonna put it over here, okay? So your babies might need to go over a little bit further. So. Alright. Yeah, I don't feel safe about this. I'm gonna actually get a pot start by ladling until I get it to where I can at least move it. Now we are going to put our curds into our press. I'm actually going to let some of this hot whey, warm whey, warm up the press, but I've actually already put our boiling water in it. So I'm going to load those in and then we'll put it on medium pressure for 30 minutes. I spread the other side of my cheese cloth over the top before I put my follower on. And then I usually kind of fold up the corners of the cheese box. 
And then we're going to begin our prepping. I like this setup that I have. I know I mention it all the time. If you have to be making videos, I think this is great. I need to uh, link it because it was very affordable compared to many of the other cheese presses and it wasn't quite as big. I liked it that I could stir it in a very small square footage compared to some of the others that I had seen that were much more expensive. So we're going to go with medium pressure, 30 minutes, and then we will come back. And in case I don't remember to tell you, our next, when we flip it, we're going to let it press for 12 hours, which will just be overnight for me. I'm not going to worry about waking up in the middle of the night on firm pressure. Are those curds yummy? Mm. Parmesan curds, but they are good. I'll have that too. Welcome for making cheese. Okay, we are going to flip it now, and we're going to press on firm. You do want to make sure this time you're not going to have a second chance at um, getting all the wrinkles out, so do make sure you have this stretched out pretty well. Get your cheese back in. Uh, most directions tell you to change your cheesecloth. I'm not sure why it's only been 30 minutes so I never do if you have an explanation for that that may be something I'm not considering please tell me what you think but I never do that part. I don't need more dishes laundry I don't need any extra work <laughs> that just sounds like a silly thing and then we're going to press this overnight on firm pressure we were at medium for 30 minutes now we're going to be at firm overnight at this point, you do need to make sure that you have a salt brine, an 18% salt brine ready to go because after 12 hours, which I'm not waking up at 4 a.m. getting this out, um, it'll be when I wake up at 6 or 7 in the morning, it will be taken out and then out of the press and then we're going to put it in a salt brine. This is the next step because we have added no salt to this yet. Um, this cheese is going to go in a 18% salt brine. That is um, the ratio of five cups of water to one cup of salt. I usually do it in a three gallon bucket that I keep out in our outside fridge and I will refresh it with half a cup of, of sea salt every now and then. Um, and I did that last time I used it, so I'm not going to this time. Once you make it, you can keep it in the fridge for months and months and just refresh it after about every like three or four cheeses. So, I will see you back in the morning. After having our cheese on firm pressure overnight in the press, we take it out. At that point, we are going to add it to a salt brine that we made. Um, this is going to be put in the salt brine and then flipped right before bed. This is what I do. You can do it differently, but uh, flip it inside the, the bucket of salt brine that you have. And then in the morning, after 24 hours, that's when I pull it off and I air dry them on the counter. This is actually a cumin gouda that I have air drying just on an inverted plate, the towel over it. This is ready to be vacuum sealed. I will do the same process with this Parmesan. And the Parmesan is gonna age. Once I vacuum seal it, I put it in the fridge and it will age for at least 12 months. If anything, you should probably go longer when you're putting something in the fridge because that lower temperature makes the aging process slow down. So I will definitely let you know whenever I crack open my Parmesan that I made 
last January. It's December now, so we are very close to opening that up. And I hope it's delicious. I'm sure it probably will be. Uh, I'm guaranteeing it. <laughs> But God bless. Y'all have a great day. Let me know in the comments if I can help you in any way. See ya.